G'day, welcome back. So Resolve 19 is out and it has a new feature called Film Look Creator, which everyone I'm sure is going to make a lot of videos about because everyone is obsessed with the Film Look in DaVinci Resolve, even though you really can't create Film Look in digital, but there are some good colorists who get pretty close to it. So let's look at that feature and let's look at how to use it and if it's any good. So I'm just going to use a really basic node tree today. You know, my color space transform in and out. This is a Blackmagic Pocket 6K, I think. I'll leave a link below. I'm pretty sure you can download this. I'm actually not sure where I got it. So we have this node here and we're going to go up to our OFX. Now this is only for the studio version, I'm pretty sure. So if you don't have the free version, I'm sorry, you just can't use it. So let's go big screen. So shift F and then Z. By default, it's already putting a look on your image when you put that OFX on. So if I press Control D to take it off, Control D once again to put it on. As you can see, we have a much more muted palette and we have a little bit more contrast added to our look. That's because in our presets, we have default 65 millimeter. We can just go through these and have a look. 35 is a little bit different, a little bit of vignette going on. And then we can just go around cinematic, <laughs> okay. Bleach bypass, which is a little bit interesting. I don't mind that one too much, but we can change this up here. And then we have nostalgia, which is something I feel like a lot of people are gonna use. And then we have default no effects. So this is where you create it from scratch. So if I turn this off, and on, it is doing a little bit, but we can change it by our color blend and our effects blend. So color is referring to all these color settings here. So if I were to take this color blend off, we are getting the original colors we had before we started using this OFX. And when it comes to the effects blend, basically talking about everything else. So we can just turn this off and on, and that's all halation and all that kind of stuff. So let's look at our color settings first. We'll leave this at 1-1. One, one. So with our exposure, this is working in a photometric exposure, which is a better way to adjust your luminance in your image. So this is a lot better way than you'd normally use by using gain or gamma or that type of stuff. So if we do this, as you can see, we are getting a much smoother exposure adjustments by using this. So all in all, this is probably the best feature of the entire OFX. Now, the way I do exposure is I just set my node to linear and then I adjust my exposure that way. But anyway, this is a really good feature. I really like this, that's nice. Contrast, highlights, obviously this adjusts your highlights. That's pretty interesting. Fade, it's referring to your shadows. I'm gonna bring this right up. As you can see, we have a really terrible look, so maybe you don't do that. Anyway, that's your fade which again, referring to a shadow. So as you can see, we're not really hitting the brighter parts of our image. White balance is good. It's better than the one that's in Resolve. So again, this is a nice feature. It's using chromatic adaptation instead of the way it usually does. So this is a really good feature again. So white balance again, a lot better. I wouldn't use this to adjust my white balance for myself. I work in linear in my node. So this is not something I would use, but it's still, it's really good. Tint. Again, same as the one in Resolve, but a little bit better, well, a lot better. Skin bias, now this is an interesting one. As you can see, it's adjusting. We go right in on this lady here. We are adjusting our skin tones. So this is pretty good. I don't mind this tool. We can go for a more desaturated skin look. So this is pretty good. We'll make it really warm. So obviously we're really warming up her skin tone. So again, pretty interesting stuff. Not amazing, but pretty good. Now let's jump back out again. Now, subtractive saturation. This is a really interesting one. And this is working in a more filmic saturation. So when we are adding saturation in Resolve, normally we're adding it in a digital way, which means we are actually boosting the luminance in our colors. We're making those colors brighter. Now the way subtractive saturation works is it's not affecting our luminance. We are just adding in saturation without adding in luminance. So that's a really good one. Again, you can actually do this in Resolve by using a HSV and then taking off channels one and three, and you only work in two, and then you work in gain and gamma. That's the way I usually do it, but still, this is really good. So another good little feature here. So, so far, so good. Let's move down the richness. And again, this is about your colors. 
So as you can see, we're adjusting those colors. Not bad. And then we have our bleach bypass look. So we can go really bleachy bypass, and then we can pump up our richness to get a really weird looking image. So we have that really muted film look. So pretty good so far. Now, the good thing about this pre look is it's building a nice film contrast curve. And also I should mention, it's not using film stocks. Basically what's happening is you're not using like film stocks like Fuji or Kodak 500T or 50 Daylight. You're making that film look yourself. Interesting stuff. Again, not amazing. So let's go to the split tone one. And I feel like this will be the one that most people are gonna like. But first let's take that bleach bypass off and let's put that richness down. So it doesn't look so crazy. There, it looks pretty good. We have a nice saturated image. So this is a good starting point here to here. All in all, pretty good start, but we're gonna do some split toning. And this is the one that I find the most interesting with this OFX, but it's not something I would use. Okay, so let's do that split tone. And the best way to do this is to use a gray scale. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a grayscale in the edit page, and then I put it across into my timeline. And then I've copied that look that we made with that other footage and I've pasted it onto this node here. So the way split toning is going to work, we bring it up here in our scopes, is we are separating, why did I make that smaller? We are separating our red, green, and blue in our highlights here. And then we're taking out the red in our shadows, which is giving us that classic film look, meaning that we are warmer in the highlights and then we are cooler in the shadow or the darker areas of our image. So it's kind of like a orange and teal look, but not as extreme as, you know, most movies. So if we look at our split tone here and we come down to our split tone here, able split tone. Now the amount is how much split toning you wanna do. So at the moment, we're already got that split tone because we already have EFX going on. If I chuck in the amount, we are, already creating a huge difference in our split tone. So that means our skin tones, which are around here-ish, are gonna be a lot warmer. And all those highlights are gonna be a more pinky warm look. So we're taking out that blue and we're increasing our green, we're increasing our red. So basically we are prioritizing our red in our whiter areas and then our green, then our blue, which means we are getting that pinky warm look or that golden look really. Actually, we wanted pink, we'd put the blue up there. So we're getting more golden look in our red and greens. And then we move down here in our shadow areas. We're taking out that red and we're putting in a blue and green. Now we are prioritizing our blue. So we're going for more of a teal look than a green look in our shadows. Pretty interesting stuff. And if we look at our gradient here, darker, white. So we're going for that tealy look here. We're going for that pinky warm look over here. And this is where our mid-tones are kind of sitting. So this line here-ish, we're gonna get a nice warm skin tone. Now, one thing we need to talk about is our pivot point down here. So because we're working DaVinci wide gamut, which is 0.366 roughly, we wanna set this to 0.366. Now this is, uh, again, bringing up our scopes here. That means we're sitting here. So this is basically our middle gray when it comes to working in that split tone. So we, we don't wanna be adjusting that. We want that to stay the same. So this is why that pivot is really interesting and really fantastic. Now, if you're working in a different color space, you wanna come in and adjust it because we're working in DaVinci wide gamut. That's what we wanna set it at 0.366. So if we were to copy this split tone across, I can get rid of the scope onto our other footage, so I've copied it across, now I'm gonna press Control V. And if we look at our image here, we have that split tone going on. So we have a much cooler looking image in the shadows, and then we have a warmer look in the highlights. Now it's still pretty muted. So what we can do, is actually go back and let's add some more saturation in. I don't wanna to go too crazy, I don't want some funky look. So yeah, now we have a much warmer looking image in those wider areas and her skin tones look really nice. And then we have a nice cool tearly look in the shadow, so the darker areas here. So all in all, it looks pretty good. It's not something I would use, not because I think it's a bad tool, just because I design my own LUTs and I have a certain way that I'd like my LUTs to be. And this just isn't for me, but I feel like it will be great 
other people using it. Now let's quickly go across to the other ones and have a look. I'll make this a bit bigger. My mic is actually blocking it. But let's get rid of split tone, color settings. So basically what has happened is Resolve has put everything into this one film look creator. So we have Halation, which we had before. We have Vignette to Able Vignette, and you can like, you know, increase it, increase the size, et cetera, et cetera. We have Bloom, which is gonna bloom those highlights. And we don't actually have a whole bunch of highlights going in, so it doesn't work for us. Then we have grain, so this is an interesting one. They put this in here. Now, I don't like the fact that it is in this node. I wouldn't use it because for me, grain always needs to be your last node in your node tree because you don't want anything else affecting that node. Meaning that if you put this film look creator on and then you do some other stuff afterwards, it may mess up your grain. If I was you, I would not enable this and I'd put your film grain last. Don't put it on now. Now, Flickr, I'm unaware of what this does. I'm sure it does something amazing. I'm also unaware of what Gateweave does. I would just pretend like I spoke about them. Now, as you can see, Filmgate is talking about the ratio in your camera. Well, not ratio, but the way the image is going through your camera. If we were to put on a 241, for example, as you can see, this is the image coming out of your camera if you're shooting that ratio. So let's say, yeah, Super 16. You know, it's that more boxy format that those film, uh, those film cameras had. I would just take that off. I mean, I don't think you'd ever use that, to be honest. And I think really that's about it. So, oh, when it comes to color space overrides, uh, what is happening here, it's working in the color space that you're working in, in your timeline. So whatever color space you set, that's what color space it's going to be working in. So if you didn't want to do that, you could change it here and you could put your own color space in if you want to do something else. I'm not sure why you would ever do that, but maybe they're just giving you that option. So what do you guys think of the look? I mean, not the look, but what do you guys think of the um, tool? Do you think it's any good? Also, Resolve's changed this little play thing here and it's really annoying. Why is it so small? You know what I mean? Like, why is this so small now? I don't like that at all. So let's look at it off and then on. We have a better look. Like, let's not say we don't have a better look. I feel like the contrast is probably the thing that I like the most about this and maybe the exposure adjustment. But those are two things I could do without this film tool. But if you're new to Resolve or maybe you're just intermediate or beginner, this will probably be a really good tool for you. This would be a nice way to create looks. And if you're a freelance colorist starting out, this would also be a really handy tool. This was something I wish I had when I first started out. But all in all, not bad, not fantastic. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I think it's okay. I don't think it's amazing. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. I've been Drew from Haiti Films. Thanks for watching and have a great day.